it. It's so cool to see everyone here. And give it up for Sands because, guys, this is a free, freaking free conference. Thank you for believing in the next generation. Uh, my name is Naomi. I'm so excited to be here because today I'm going to show, show you how you can break into cybersecurity, everything you need to know about starting your cybersecurity career. So let's get going. Everything you need to know. Welcome. You guys didn't think we did memes in cybersecurity, did you? We are not all that boring, actually. We're actually kind of cool. Maybe not all the time, but we are cool. So if you join cybersecurity, join us. We need more cool people who also appreciate a good meme, right? I want to start with some audience participation. Audience participation check. Let's raise your hand. I can kind of see you here. Raise your hand if this is your first cybersecurity conference. Ah, hi. Oh, wave to me. I feel a little lonely right now. Thank you, thank you. How about you don't have, raise your hand, if you don't have a technical background or degree, yep, we're good here. We're all good here. Lots of people left. Hey, and if you're online, give me an emoji too. I can't see you, but other people can. Uh, raise your hands if you are just starting your cybersecurity journey. Stop almost everyone in this room, so you're not alone. Now, here's kind of the bonus. Who is excited to be here today? Yeah? You guys are excited? That's awesome, yes! Start that cybersecurity journey because we need you here. Now, here's, now I can't really see everyone, but the folks who did not raise their hand, the panelists, the moderators, the people who are here helping out, y'all people stand up if you can, just because we can show the people who are here to build that next generation. You're here to support them. Look at all these people standing here. Look at all these people, thank you, thank you. You're all here to support the next generation, we are here for you. We are not getting paid. We are, we got a hotel room last night, which is nice, but that's about it, right? We're here to support. We wanna build that next generation. I'm glad you're here. We're glad you're here because we need you. We need you. You might have heard 3.5 million, how many zeros is that? That's a lot. 3.5 million unfilled cybersecurity jobs by 2025. That number is just expected to increase. You heard about 400,000 just in the United States. This is across the world. And if you think about that, that has a lot of repercussions. Think about cyber criminals, how they're winning. You hear about those data breaches all the time. You hear about your pipelines getting breached. You get no water because the water supply has been breached too because, man, it's really, really tough out there. All those cyber criminals, they got our data. They got access to stuff. They're, they're running the show. Yeah? So we need more cybersecurity professionals because we don't have enough to do security. The more security people we have, the better security we'll have. At least that's the hope, right? So we need to build the next generation. That's you. That's everyone in this room There's the next generation. We want you to learn what good information security looks like. And that's what my job is. That's what the people here volunteering are trying to do, is to teach you good information security. So join us. Another thing, some problems here, cybersecurity burnout. Y'all, if you're in cybersecurity, you might know this. Because we have 3.5 unfil unfilled jobs, 3.5 million unfilled jobs in cybersecurity, we have a massive dearth of cybersecurity professionals. That means we don't have enough, right? And because of that, a lot of our work, our day-to-day -day work, we are so tired from the alerts, from all the breaches, from the constant learning, from the constant being on call. We don't have enough people, and therefore we are just exhausted. And we're sitting in our jobs thinking, man, I wish it was easier. I wish there were more people to fill my shoes. I wish I could take a vacation, right? And that's because we just can't get enough people on our teams. And because of that burnout, there's actually something, I've read a statistic out here. Anybody want to try to guess? What percentage of the cybersecurity workforce today is over the age of 35? I won't tell you how old I am, by the way. Anyone want to guess? Shout it out or put it in the Slack. What percentage of cybersecurity professionals are 35 or older? 75, I hear 75, I'm gonna go higher. 85, okay. Not bad, you guys, not bad. The answer is 83%. 83% of cybersecurity professionals are age 35 and over, which means in two to three decades, we will have a complete mass exodus in this industry because we want to retire, yes, we do. I personally want to retire, I want to get fat on a beach, I want to sit there with a martini in my hand, and I just want to like not worry about my data. And I can't do that unless there's people who fill my shoes after me, yes? And I'm sure that's true for a lot of the cybersecurity prof professionals in this room. I'm not the only one. So we need to build that next generation of cybersecurity professionals. I am so glad you're here because we need you. So even if this is your first cybersecurity conference, even if you don't have a technical background or degree, and even if you are just starting your cybersecurity journey, you belong here. And we definitely need you. So here we go, everything you need to know, 
to get started in your cybersecurity career. Thank you for being here, you guys. I'm so excited. I have five things to share with you today. Number one, yes, it is possible to transition into cybersecurity from a non-technical field. I see some heads going like, what? I don't believe you. It is possible. Check this out. I got you some examples. Examples here. Jessica, Jessica T., uh, an intern of mine, I hired her. She was actually an opera singer. Really, really good, too. In fact, so good that I don't know how good she is, but I, she was on YouTube and on TV, so I'm like, I think you're really, really good at this. But here's the crazy thing. Opera singers didn't have a lot of work during COVID because all the opera singer things shut down. So she was like, well, I need money. <laughs> It'd be really good if I could eat. And she decided, you know, I'm just going to see what else is out there. So she looked on a Facebook group, Facebook page for opera singers. My friend, a recruiter, posted my job for a cybersecurity intern on that Facebook group because she's also an opera singer. So what did Jessica do? She took a look at that Facebook group. She saw the post for the internship, and she applied. And she got it. And she was awesome. She passed her Security Plus after 90 days. She got a full-time job after 90 days. She passed her, uh, is it the Analyst Plus, at the end of that first year, and she got promoted after one year. I mean, these people are incredible. You are incredible. You're just like these people. I don't know if there's any opera singers in the house. Not me. Let's just put that arm down. But there's other people like you, other people like Jessica, who do this all the time. Someone like Chris. Chris, I know you're watching, so hi, what's up? So Chris, crazy story. She was a babysitter at the age of six for $3 an hour. She dropped out of high school at 15. She worked in daycares, restaurants, and just random jobs. Back in 2020, she decided she needed a change. She got accepted into a SANS leadership or a diversity academy. She took a couple of SANS courses. She got an internship. And now she's rocking it out as a cybersecurity analyst for a small, mid-sized company. And she also teaches the next generation as well. And this is all within the last, the last three years. People like her exist. People like you exist. If you don't think you can do it, look at the people who are here to help you. Look at the people who are here on the screen. There are so many people out there. In fact, myself, I didn't transition from non-technical, but for sure, someone gave me a chance back in the day. I had no experience. I just was a random person, but they still gave me a chance. And that's what, I, that's what my nonprofit is. I want to encourage the hiring managers and the security leaders to take chances on people like you. Because I know how much passion you have. I know how much potential you have. Yes, right? Check out these other examples. My friend John, Master Sergeant John. Air Force, that's his retirement picture. Look how happy he is. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. Look, listen, 23-year military veteran also dropped out of college and did not do a single thing in cybersecurity in his MOS, military occupational specialty. He did not do any cybersecurity, but right before he transitioned, he was like, you know what, I need a job transition, I gotta go back to civilian life. So he got an internship at Lowe's through the DOD Skill Bridge program, check it out if you're a military veteran, and he got a job as an intern at Lowe's to do vulnerability management. Awesome, and guess what, after a year, got a full-time role at Lowe's and he's still there on their information security team. So people like John exist, people like you exist, right? So if you, if John can do it, you can do it. Same thing with Dennis, he was a 16 year veteran on the police force in Kentucky, and he was a police detective. The last five years of his career there, he actually worked cyber crimes. That's how he got interested in cybersecurity. He's like, you know what? I wanna be on the good side too. I wanna to fight against those hackers after I retire. He got a job as a cybersecurity analyst at a security company, a security consulting company, and he's still there. He got promoted recently. People like this exist. They put in that work. They do the networking like you are today. They're learning. They're constantly just improving themselves. They're putting that work ethic. And people that hired them believe in them to give them that chance. And it's a beautiful thing to see. Here are those things that you need to break into cybersecurity. If you want to be like Jessica, if you want to be like Chris, if you want to be like Dennis and John, this is what you need. You need hard work. You need perseverance and you need to network. Those three things. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit today just to get you guys uh, a leg up, yeah? All right. Here are some things that I want you to check out during the session. I know Jennifer uh, had mentioned this earlier, but really, really want you to go to these things. Don't just 
uh, talk to people and just not pay attention. Like, actually go to these things because they're really important for your career, and you guys have a really good opportunity through SANS today. You really do. I'm so glad you're here. 10, 20 a.m., you're going to go to the from nothing to something, getting experience when you know it, have no experience. Um, is it Matt? I got it right. Yes, Matt is going to be our panelist here today, and he's going to help you guys answer a bunch of questions about how to actually take something from nothing into something. Because not all experience needs to be full-time experience. Right, Matt? And that's what's interesting is hiring managers, if you look at these job descriptions, it's going to say you need five years of experience doing this. You need blah, blah, blah experience doing that. And you know what? Sometimes a hiring manager is going to be like, you know, I do also realize it's OK not to have that full-time experience if you've done other things to help train yourself, if you volunteered, if you helped with summits like this. If you've done things on your own, again, that work ethic and that hard work, that's going to get you into that interview with the hiring manager. They're interested in that background, interested in that stuff that you've done to build yourself up. It does not have to be full-time experience. And here's another thing I love to tell. In your current role, you are doing cybersecurity. You're doing something in cybersecurity. Put that on your resume because that is relevant experience. Yes? Give me some head nods. Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, you're also at 11.30. Check out the pivot panel, success careers, success stories from career changers. So you'll hear more from people like Jessica and Chris and John and Dennis. You're going to see a whole bunch of people on that panel with the same exact stories, and you're going to say, I can do it too. That's me. I'm up there. I can do that too. All right. Number two, there are many cybersecurity career paths to choose from. I'm sure you guys know this, but it's not all just hackers and hoodies. There are lots of things you can do. Actually, one of my favorite ones is governance, risk, and compliance. I know y'all are probably like, well, oh, that's a really boring thing if you've never heard of auditing, right? Oh, wow, GRC. But it can be really, really cool. You get to talk to a lot of interesting people. You get to understand the frameworks and regulations around the industry and why they're important. You understand the why behind cybersecurity. That's what GRC is for. This is great for people like uh, librarians, former teachers, people who understand how people work and who have great relationship skills and empathy and, and communication skills. GRC is a role for you, trust me. Security intelligence. I think I met uh, Simeon today. Where are you, Simeon? Simeon, Simeon, Simeon. So he helps out. He does threat intelligence, security intelligence for Microsoft. He's here today. Two panels. He's going to do one panel and then the KC7 training later to help you guys understand what threat intelligence is. A really fun thing. Check it out later. Um, you can do security intelligence if you're uh, really good with data. And you can see in patterns and things like that. So if you can understand th something happening over here and correlate that with something that's happening over here, you might be great at security intelligence. Engineering, tons of different types of intel engineering. There's cloud security, there's networking, there's application security engineering, all kinds of engineering. If you like to get your hands on the keyboard and build things and break things, that might be for you. And IT support, you've heard of this desktop support stuff, right? A really, really great way to get into any technical field is to get your hands on working with people, solving problems, using that critical thinking and your creativity skills to solve their problems. There's more. Systems, penetration testing, these are what you'll get when there's an application. You need to check to see if there's any vulnerabilities or any holes, any bugs in the system. You're going to be doing that kind of stuff. People who are good at this, really good, again, with the data and really good at understanding where the problems might be. They understand how systems are built, so they know how to break them. Cloud security, cloud is a huge thing. If you guys are uh, living in 2023, everything's in the cloud. Cloud is just someone else's computer. And so if you are interested in cloud security, check it out. There's tons of free resources out there. AWS, Azure, uh, Google Cloud, not as good. But we've got, we've got tons of great free resources for you guys. Even SANS has some really good stuff on cloud security. Check it out. There's tons of white papers. Check out reference architectures. It's my favorite thing to do. You go to AWS, type in reference architecture. You look at all the diagrams on how to build secure systems from start to finish. You understand what each component is doing, how they interconnect with each other, how the data flows within each one of those systems. Oh, it's so exciting, you guys. Yes, reference architectures is your friend. Try to get those through those, understand everything about them and you're going to start picking up on some of the language, picking up on some of the protocols, understanding how cybersecurity really works in a real corporate system. All right, security incident response. This could be you if you work well under pressure. So people like EMTs, 
uh, coaches, sports coaches, referees. If you don't know this, I'm actually a referee. I get yelled at all the time. <laughs> yeah, by those coaches. But guess what? It helps me stay calm under pressure. Coach, this yellow card's for you, right? So you need to actually stay calm under pressure when I'm, someone else's, their hair is on fire. You might be good at, at security incident response. And there's so much more. There's so much more. Check out these resources, cyberseek.org. This one's really cool. There's a map in cyberseek.org that actually tells you how many unfilled jobs there are in your state, which is so cool. You're just like, oh, okay, I'm gonna, you know, I want to live here, you know, Florida or whatever. And then you'll be like, oh, look at all these great jobs. And they're also mapped back to different career paths, which is even better. So you click on, hey, I, I might want to be a cybersecurity analyst. What would it take? What kind of like things are in that career path for me? Cyberseek.org, a free resource. Everyone should be checking that out. Um, I, my nonprofit actually has a cybersecurity quiz based on the Myers-Briggs personality traits. So if you go to cybersecuritygatebreakers.org slash quiz, you can take a free quiz. It's like two minutes and you, it tells you what you might be good at. Really, really cool stuff, all free. All right, some related summit sessions today. Please go to these, the nice career, discovering career pathways brought to, our brought to you by our friends from the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST. Those guys are great. I don't know if they're here today right now, but they are here to help you find out what you might be good at. So please go to this one. At 2.15, you're gonna check out the cybersecurity role finder. Jennifer mentioned this, navigating your personal path into cybersecurity. Uh, what was that, career? And you are going to see, again, what else you're good at. You're gonna use their role finder tool. Very, very cool stuff. Please go to that. Don't ignore me, go. All right, number three, I want you to make sure that you know this. This is super important. I don't know why I didn't put this first, but number three, I would say, it is sometimes more important who you know than what you know. Now, it's, life is not fair. Can we all agree on this? Life is not a meritocracy, even though sometimes we do wish it was. You know this. Some people are born with just more things than other people. What are you gonna do about it? Are you gonna sit there and cry because somebody else might be better? Or are you gonna work your butt off and try to get there, whatever your goal is? I wanna be over here. I wanna see the people in cybersecurity in this column, not the ones like, oh, I'm just not gonna ever be. I want you to be like, I can do this. I can work hard, I'm smart enough, I'm awesome, and I'm gonna network my butt off and tell people how great I am because I am going to get into cybersecurity. I want people like you in this column here because I, we need more people with that passion, with that drive, and that curiosity, and that critical thinking. We need more of that in cybersecurity. Here's some tips on building your network. You guys are here, which is very good. Please talk to other people. I know we're not all extroverts. I know some of us are gonna be introverted, but I want you to actually like say hi and say, hey, my name is, and this is what I wanna do. What do you do? Like have a conversation. I know we're not great at that sometimes, but please, please, please have a conversation with someone new today because that is how you start building your network with people just like you. And those people know other people. And they're like, hey, I did meet some really awesome, I met a Jennifer at the SAN Summit. She seems really excited to transition to cybersecurity. Is there anything we can give her? Any other network connections we can give to her or help her with more resources? Is there anything we can do to help Jennifer? Because, man, she's really cool. And we would love to have her in our industry. More people that you meet, the more your network grows. And that is how you're actually going to sometimes get a job in cybersecurity. Be curious consistently trying to learn all the different things, reference architectures I mentioned in AWS. If you're at least curious about cloud security, you should be going on AWS reference architectures after this, or maybe later today, and just be like, I wonder what the heck she's talking about, yeah, right? So you're gonna go there and you're gonna be like, oh, okay, this is really cool. And then just dive down the rabbit hole, be like, you know what, three-tier architectures look pretty interesting. Let me see what the heck that is. And just go down the rabbit hole, lose yourself in the learning. And that's the best thing about cybersecurity. You're constantly, constantly learning. And that's another thing. Once you know you don't know everything, you stay immensely humble, which is the coolest thing ever, because then you realize you're not great at everything. You give yourself permission to learn and get better at stuff. That is the best thing ever. You're like, oh, wait, so I don't have to be like a noob. I can learn this. Oh my God, I can be good at this. This is you, this is you. Stay humble and stay hungry because we need more of that in cybersecurity. And the last thing here, just a tip, just ask. If you like have a conversation with somebody and you're kind of nervous to talk to them or whatever, just be like, hey, do you have five minutes? I want to talk to you. What's the worst they can say? Like, 
well, they could say like, oh, your, your zipper's undone or something. Like, I'm sure that's, that's not gonna make you feel good. But like the worst they could say is no. And then you're just gonna move on and be like, okay, thanks. And then talk to the next person, right? Try to network, put yourself out there, write things. What do you think about getting into cybersecurity from a non-traditional background? These are the things you can put your voice out there. The internet is full of free publishing uh, platforms like Medium is a good one for blogging. Uh, you've got LinkedIn, you've got all the different Facebook groups. Just put your thoughts out there and just start ruminating on things that you've always been curious about anyway. Right? And people are going to be attracted to that. They're going to be like, oh, here's an idea. Have you thought of this? And they're going to start building your network that way. You're going to have friends. You're going to have sometimes enemies. That's okay. All of those opinions are going to help shape your opinion also on things. And it's going to help you learn. It's going to help you grow. So just ask. I'm sure lots of people here who are currently in the industry are willing to help you. Uh, again, the worst thing that we can say is no. Uh, and also, your zipper's undone. But we are here to help you. Some related summit sessions. Uh, I would love for you to go to these at 11 a.m., going to this, the distance, Lessons from the Last Mile Education Fund. This is really cool about different scholarships and how we support the people trying to get into cybersecurity who might not be the top of the pile, right? Like sometimes the scholarships are only given for the top two or three people. This lesson here, this, this talk here by April, she's going to actually tell you about how they support people throughout the industry, not just the people at the top. All right, really cool. At noon, at lunch, check out the SANS faculty. Uh, you're going to talk to people who are currently working for SANS. They, they write courses, they teach them across the hallway here. They're all doing different courses for all the people in cybersecurity. Um, you're gonna meet some of these guys and girls. You're going to talk to them. You're gonna ask them questions. Awesome, awesome way to build your network. At 4 p.m., please, please, please check out the resume glow up, highlighting your transferable skills. You're going to bring a copy of your resume. You're going to have somebody look at it for you. You're going to understand where you might need some work, what transferable skills you might have, and then you're going to network. The whole point, meet people, talk to them, understand how they might have gotten into cybersecurity, because then you can do the same. And at 5 o'clock, please stay for the networking reception. I don't know if there's alcohol. Is there? Okay, there is. All right. If anything, stay for that. Okay. Number four, being in cybersecurity means continuous learning. I mentioned this earlier. Yes, you do have to have that growth mindset. Please don't just be like, I'm always going to be dumb. I'm always not going to know this. Would you rather this? Or would you rather, I can do this. I can learn anything. And yes, I might be here right now, but I can be here also. I can be just like those people who understand all the things and by the way, we don't know all the things. We're continuously learning in cybersecurity. If you have some sort of impression that we're experts in every single domain in cybersecurity, you're really wrong. There's a ton of stuff I don't know, actually. I could fill a whole nother keynote about that. All the stuff I don't know. Because we're continuously changing. Technology's always changing. Cybersecurity's always changing. We're playing catch up with technology. Technology's changing. Cybersecurity's kind of a lagging thing. So if there's always change, there's always something to learn. And have that curiosity, have that passion to learn, because that's going to serve you really well in this industry. Do not stop learning once you get the job. And that is so critical, you guys. I mean, you stop learning, you kind of die, right? So if you are really curious about cybersecurity now, keep that passion with you by the time you become a senior. Because guess what? You are also continuously learning. You're growing. You're accelerating your career. And you are going to be able to bring up that next generation behind you. And that is my wish for you. You are the current generation, the next generation, I want you to be here, and I want you to help the people up behind you. Oops. So at 3, 3 p.m., role playing, this is Simeon again, uh, that continuous learning thing. Check him out. He's the coolest, and he's going to help you guys get your hands a little bit on keyboard, hands on keyboard, with threat intelligence, security intelligence, the KC KC7 um, exercise. And it's really, really cool. I wish I could stay for this one and also the alcohol. All right, continuous learning. Here's some other ideas for you. You come to cybersecurity conferences like this one. And by the way, SANS, thank you so much for putting this on. This is their first ever free SANS summit ever. I hope you guys do more. Yeah, yeah, come to it. Yeah, so you guys showed up. So they're like, hey, maybe we'll do some more, right? Don't drink all their alcohol because maybe, maybe they won't have more. All right. 
do webinars, meetups. There's so many free things out there, you guys. There's so many things that you can just Google and be like, hey, there's a webinar on cloud security. There's a webinar on SOC analysts, Security Operations Center uh, analysts, SOC. There's other things that you can do. You can just be like, I'm interested in this thing. I wonder what else there can be. And you just do a Google and you're like, hey, that looks fun. That looks really cool. Maybe I'll go. You know, and just go. You learn something, do something, build something, break something. Well, okay, stop. Naomi, don't break things. Break something that you have permission to break. Do you want a bug bounty or something like that? Or build something which you then break yourself. Okay, please do not go to jail. All right, vendor certifications is another one. SANS is sponsoring this one. They have a great number of great, great number of certifications. Uh, I started my career myself with the SANS GIAC, uh, GSEC, I forget what to call it, uh, GX Security Essential Certification, GSEC. It's a really, really good entry level certification. Check it out. They also have scholarships and programs to help pay for that. I won't mention anything else beyond that, right? But it's really, really good. And they have tons of other certifications. There are so many other certifications from different certification bodies. ISACA, I-S-A-C-A -A, is a really good one. We've got Comp TIA, Comp TIA. And they're all different levels of certification. So once you get your entry level certification, if you do want to get one, continuously learn, build up your career by getting different certifications. Oh, and by the way, it's all about the learning not the final result. And yes, you might have that certification to show off to your future employer, but the entire idea of certifications is to really learn that information and to absorb it and to apply it into your next role. So please, please, please think about it this way. If I were to stop my career and I said, hey, I'm, I'm happy with the way I am. I don't want to grow anymore. I'm just satisfied with what I want to do. Okay, maybe I don't need any more certifications, but if you want to accelerate, if you want to learn new things, if you want to continuously move this way and build your career, and by the way, helping those people beyond you, behind you, you're going to want to continuously learn. You're going to want to get those certifications to, one, prove to yourself that you can do it, prove to those employers that you've got the knowledge, and to also build up your career and your knowledge. And lastly, this is my favorite thing ever, be a mentor. There's always somebody who's going to be more new than you. The fact that you're here today doing this conference, you're already a leg up on the people who didn't come, yes? The people who are just sitting at home doing other things, they could have come here, but they are not. But if you actually next time bring a friend or you be like, hey, I, I just went to this really cool summit. Man, that keynote speaker was really good. Right, so you're gonna, you're gonna bring up that next generation because there's always somebody who's newer than you. So even if you think you're new, which you probably are, but that's okay, you're still day one, day two, day three, day 20, day 40, day 90, day 100, you're going to help teach somebody else. And the best way to learn is to teach. I'll say that again, the best way to learn is to teach. And I cannot explain this even more. If you guys are a teacher, got, got any teachers out there? Love you guys. I don't know how you do it, honestly. Yeah, got some teachers. Awesome. We would love to have more teachers in cybersecurity. We need people who can teach people because, wow, sometimes we've got a self-awareness issue sometimes in cybersecurity where we're not good learners, right? We need people to help us learn. And teachers are great at that. All right, and last but not least, Soft skills. You all know this. There's hard skills, those technical skills, the things that will help you do the job, technically. And then there's those soft skills. They do matter in cybersecurity, especially if you want to get a job in 2023 and beyond. Because companies are all made out of people. They're not just systems and reference architectures and tickets, right? Like, there are so many things in a company that you need soft skills for. So if you are not a great communicator or, or maybe you're kind of a bit of a, a jerk, right? Not that we have any of those in cybersecurity. We're all nice. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> train of thought. We need more people with different types of soft skills, being able to communicate, empathy, emotional intelligence. Here's some soft skills that will get you the job. Oh, integrity, number one. Definitely integrity. Ooh. Did I say that you guys were too pretty for jail? You guys are so pretty. Please don't go to jail. You go to jail if you do something bad. 
Yes? We don't need those people in cybersecurity. We need people with high integrity in cybersecurity. Work ethic. That means getting that drive, getting the work done, being a good team player, learning on your own. All these things that will help you in your job will also help you in life, honestly. Having that great work ethic, not being complacent with where you are, but really trying to build yourself up, build those around you. Work ethic to do awesome things. Here's another one. Stay curious. I mentioned this earlier. If you don't have that passion, if you don't have that willingness to learn and to really churn through things, you know, you're really just going to get stuck here. Yes, you might be in cybersecurity, and you might be okay with that. Maybe, we, you know, some people just like doing the thing to get by, and that's fine. That's fine. But if you want more for yourself, if you want more for the next generation, if you want more for your neighbors and your friends and your acquaintances, you're going to want to be here. You're going to want to build yourself up. You're going to have that curiosity and that, and that desire to learn and to do new things and to try new domains and be like, hey, uh, team leader, I want to try this new thing. Do you have any need for that? And I, I can help you with this kind of stuff. Volunteer your time, volunteer at nonprofits, uh, volunteer at conferences. You can do all this stuff, have that curiosity and that thirst for learning. Attention to detail. This one's really good because in cybersecurity, sometimes you miss one little data point right here, and man, you've just missed a completely other thing that blew up over here. In cybersecurity, you need to know the trees before you see that bigger forest. You need to be able to see both. But good cybersecurity analysts, especially in engineers, the people who are really doing the day-to-day -day work, they could see those little issues. They're having that attention to detail, and they can follow it all the way through to the bigger thing and they know that point A connects to point B. If you have that attention to detail, that is a great skill to have. Last but not least, good communication skills. This is something I had to work on. I actually read a lot of books on how to deal with people. I was a weird little kid growing up. Yeah. I had no friends, actually. Uh, do I have friends now? Yeah. Hey, thank you, you guys. All right, cool. All right, so, so that's the thing. We might have been here, maybe me as a kid, I was a weird little kid, but you know, I was like, hey, you know what? I don't like being weird. I don't like being alone. Why don't I just read some books, get a little bit better, talk to people, learn how to be a, a regular human? Yes, good communication skills, always something that you can learn. I certainly learned it too. All right, and I am about to wrap up here. Yes, you can break into cybersecurity with a non-technical background. Do you guys believe me now? Yes! Oh, I'm so excited. All right, there are many cybersecurity career paths to choose from. And sometimes it is more important who you know than what you know. Being in cybersecurity means continuous learning and soft skills matter. I want to wrap this up. I want you guys to join us. We need you. We need you. I'm tired talking about this. I've been talking about this for a, a, a long time now. And I see the potential. We see the potential. The gate breakers, the people who are actually supporting the next generation, we see you. We see how much like, effort you put in and how much potential you have. And we need that. Oh, and also, sometimes it's, it's really helpful to have new blood on a team, right? So, man, you just start, you start getting that whole, like, collaboration thing and like exciting and skill and, and all that stuff and you, you get that new blood in here, man, it gives all the security managers and the CISOs that, that life. We need that. So join us. Be part of the next generation. We need you. We need you. Have a great summit today. Thank you so much. And it's so good to see you. Please say hi to me.